Welcome guys, in this video I wanted to show you how you can get clean, crisp, noiseless photos and videos with any camera. So what I'm about to show you literally is going to work with any camera, uh, as long as this camera is not a, a potato basically, <laughs> as long as you're actually able to get normal images. A lot of times people think to get images uh, without any noise, you have to have cameras that are uh, able to shoot really high ISOs. Uh, and that's actually not the case. You can shoot with pretty much any camera. And also, just to illustrate this, um, I don't want to show you just shots like these ones, which were done at night, but also, for example, this scene that I did during the day to show you how, if you're not following the right techniques, you can even screw up uh, this kind of a shot. Uh, so here, for example, is the shot where I was just testing out with my brother. Uh, actually, the costumes for the sequence that we're shooting uh, were, uh, we're, we're going to be basically mimicking the look of a film, uh, O Brother Where Art Thou, which actually has very kind of overexposed, kind of a, you know, very bright look with a lot of brown tones. And as you'll notice in this shot, uh, there's uh, the shot is just well exposed. Uh, was I used uh, the histogram uh, and the built-in light meter uh, in my camera. This, by the way, was shot on the Panasonic GH4, which uh, is by no means a low-light or great low-light camera. It's a shot that was done during the day uh, with plenty of light source. Uh, and so there's really nothing to worry about. But actually in this case, uh, because what I'm trying to replicate is a shot that you see kind of looks like this, which has very high key lighting, very bright. Uh, in this case, uh, you have to be kind of aware when you're uh, exposing for a shot like this, kind of what, you, what you're going for. What is your final look that you, you're trying to get? And that's, I would say, the biggest mistake that most people make is most people just try to get a well exposed shot, you could say. Uh, and so they just expose it without thinking much about what is the final look that they want. And in this case, because uh, I knew that uh, the, the final shot is going to be very bright, almost overexposed looking, uh, it actually made more sense for me to overexpose the shot a little bit in camera. So here, let me actually show you what I've shot for the final sequence here with my brother replicating the look of the film O Brother Where Art Thou. And as you'll notice, they're overexposed. Uh, they are actually exposed by almost one f-stop. Um, and uh, the reason, like I said, I did that is because you know, I, I knew in the final shots I didn't care about protecting the highlights. What I did care about more uh, was the actual shadows, because the shadows and the dark areas of your image is always where the noise is going to be kind of basically more visible, is, or that's really where the noise uh, appears. So you got to be very careful when you have any kind of shadows in your shot. Now, like I said, this shot is overly, just kind of overexposed, very high key lighting. There's very little shadows, but there's still some shadows there in the back. Uh, now, to get my final look, I basically apply uh, my, this basically color lat that I created. This is from my new uh, color lats uh, that replicate various famous movies. Uh, you can get that, by the way, on my website. Um, and anyways, I apply this lat to my shot, and you can see this is how we get the final look. So now let me go and apply that same LUT to the, the original sort of a test shot that I did where it was just properly exposed. And you can see this is how the shot looks. It's nice if I just simply apply it like this, it's, you, you don't necessarily see excessive noise. But it definitely does not look like the film O Brother Where Art Thou. The reason is because here just as a comparison, you'll notice in this shot it looks a lot brighter. And even when you look at here the, the RGB parade here, uh, you'll notice that all the information here is basically above the 50%, you know, and uh, and going basically over into 100 and even a little bit over 100. Whereas uh, here now, looking at our shot that was properly exposed, you'll notice that the information is, there's some obviously in the highlight, but nothing in the, in the extreme highlights. Now, th that's not the kind of look that I'm going after. So in this case, what it simply means is I would have to go here before I applied my, uh, you know, my final look, uh, so I'll basically just select the shot itself and I'll go into my basic color correction and I'll adjust the exposure. So I'll have to increase the exposure in, in this case. As I start doing that, you'll notice here i am start pulling all the information more in the highlights. So I'm just adding exposure here. So as I start increasing it, you'll notice that I'm start, starting to get the kind of look that, that's similar to the kind of look that I got in this shot. 
But you'll notice also here, there's not a lot of like the shadows, for example. And that's because I exposed it and kind of on purpose made sure that there, the shadows were, like I said, you know, nice and bright. So that, like you see here, the shadow under his hat doesn't look very dramatic because that's, again, that's the kind of look that I was going after. Well, as you'll notice in here, those shadows are pretty strong under the hat. And that's because in the original image, uh, if I was to just kind of show you guys quickly how it looked before, let me just hide the, our color grade and then turn off here any adjustment we do to the shot. That's because the original properly exposed image, which, you know, in this case, his skin tones look good and everything, the shadows are basically just black here. There's no information there. So once I apply my color grade, uh, or actually even before I apply my color grade, if I were to just show you what happens when I increase the exposure here uh, in my uh, basic color correction, you'll notice that I made the whole shot overall bright, but not the, the shadows. because they're, Why? Because there's not much information there. So, uh, you know, then when I apply my final look, it just doesn't look the same. It's very contrasty. It definitely doesn't look like that uh, sort of a high key lighting. And so that's why it's better to get a lot of that stuff basically already in camera while you're shooting. And so you should kind of know what's the final look that you're going after. Now, one way you could say of fixing this is again with color grading. And yes, you can do that to a point, but if you start pushing the image too much, you're gonna start noticing a lot more noise basically in, in those shadows. And that's because noise stays in the shadows. And noise is actually uh, created by various things. ISO or high ISO, should I say, in cameras, will usually introduce you know, more noise. So the higher the ISO you put up, the more noise is, is gonna be. Uh, but another case is just simply the compression, the codec, the, the basically the actual file itself is going to have more noise stored in the kind of darker parts of the image. Now this shot, like I said, was exposed in the middle of the day on the Panasonic GH4, but I used the lowest possible ISO, so ISO 200. It's very clean. So you, you, you should say, well, so I should have no noise in that image. But like I said, part of the noise there is has nothing to do with ISO, but actually with the compression. Uh, so once, since this is already a, a compressed image that was saved to my, you know, my SD card on my, my camera, once I bring it into my editing program and I start playing with the colors, and let's say in this case I want to brighten up those shadows, if I do it a little bit, you might not notice a big difference. If I do it a lot, like let's say in this case that's kind of more or less with the look that I want, uh, well, you know, if you look at the shot now, you'll notice that it's it's going to be more noise there visible in the shot, and that's because all that noise that was there in the shadows is now amplified. I basically made it brighter. Uh, it's definitely a lot more visible. If I, for example, zoom in here, and just so you guys see it now zoomed in, in the shadows there of the shot, you'll see it's a lot more of this kind of noise dancing around. So you definitely want to be very careful uh, of how you expose your shots. Exposure is, I would say, key and when it comes to getting a nice clean images. And to know what kind of exposure you want, doesn't matter whether you're shooting at night scenes or in daylight, like you see here, you wanna kinda know what is the final look that you're going after. Now one tip I can give you is you definitely wanna stay away from underexposing your image. Uh, you know, if you overexpose an image, yes, you're gonna clip some of the highlight information, but at least you'll still end up with a clean looking image. If you underexpose your shot, even by a little bit, you're you're really just going to be doing nothing more but introducing uh, a noise that wasn't there in the first place. What I mean by that is like you know, in a shot like this, uh, the same kind of a example sort of test I did with my brother, and the same you could say you know, a lighting situation, everything is really the same, uh, and the same actually ISO. I shot this at ISO still 200. You'll notice that now because I underexposed the shot, the noise is going to be a lot more visible. So here, let me just you know, kind of show you guys. This is the shot. If you look at it here on, on the histogram, definitely now all the information is below 80%. There's nothing even going you know, past that. And more here in, in the shadows. And now this shot is only underexposed by half an f-step. It's actually definitely not a lot. And in many cases, you'll actually uh, see people you know, tell you that you should be underexposing by half an f-step to protect the highlights. Well, like I said, it's uh, I would much rather worry about the shadows than protecting the highlights. Because here's what's going to happen when I want to take this shot that's just underexposed by half an f-stop, and I try to brighten it up. So I'll add exposure, and you know, try to make it look a little bit better like the other shot. But now, uh, even if I apply the same color grade like I had before, 
you'll notice it's still lots of contrast. The shadows there under his hat and, uh, and things like that, they look you know, excessively dark. So in this case, again, I'm going to take the shadows and brighten up the shadows. Well, now we're getting a little bit closer to what we had in our final shot. Well, look what happens though when I play it. And even more importantly, let me zoom in here and look what happens in the shadows when I play it. I basically just amplified the hell out of all that noise that existed in the shadows. And keep in mind, this has nothing to do with low light. This and nothing to do even with ISO or shooting in high ISOs. Because like I said, this image, just like the, the previous test that I did, is still shot at ISO 200. Now here's what happens when you underexpose a shot by one f-step. Once I apply uh, my adjustment here, so kind of increase the exposure, and then, you know, do the same thing with the shadows, brighten those up. And, you know, already you can start seeing, before I do my final color grade, this kind of noise then dancing there. But look what happens once I apply my final color grade. Look at all that crazy, crazy noise in there. And it's definitely visible when I go and zoom in on the shot here. And you'll notice this excessive crazy noise. Uh, and this is, like I said, just you know, underexposed by one f-stop. But in this case, because I know that for my final look, I have to push the image even further, it's something that I got to be really, really careful about. If you make the same kind of mistakes, uh, but in doing, for example, low light scenes, then you're really going to just you know, screw up your shots and you're going to make your videos or photos look very amateur. So here's some shots that I got with my wife uh, at night. And this is shot with the Panasonic GH5. Again, definitely not a low light camera, as people would say. Um, and it's shot actually at ISO 3200, which already many people are saying that you shouldn't shoot at that ISO with that camera because it's excessively noisy. And yes, it's going to be more noisy definitely than shooting at ISO 200. But in this case, I had to shoot at ISO 3200 to get basically the right kind of exposure with the lighting that I had. Now, uh, to get this image looking right, uh, what I got to do is I got to, you know, add the, the right kind of contrast. So uh, I'm going to, in this case, I'm just going to apply a lot, uh, which kind of converts a standard log or V-log profile into basically a uh, kind of Rec. 709 video. So here, I'm just going to apply it. And this is now how this shot looks. So just to kind of show you the what happens here with the histogram. This is before. This is how the log profile looked. And definitely because it's a shot done at night, it's way underexposed, you could say. So I've underexposed it, and it's but it's properly exposed. Uh, what I mean by that is I looked at the scene with my eyes, and I knew that in this scene, it's a night scene, I want it to be mainly, you know, basically dark. As long as I can see some kind of basically definition on my wife's face here, uh, that I know that it's the shot is going to look good, it's going to feel like it's night, but you'll still be able to see what you need to see. Uh, and like I said, and uh, I don't have to worry about introducing noise in there. So like I said, I've exposed it correctly. I saw 3200. Uh, my aperture was wide open at f2.8. Uh, and the shutter speed was basically, or the shutter angle was 180 degrees, or two times my uh, expo uh, my exposure, which in this case I was shooting 60 frames per second. So for those of you who are doing photography, this means that I was shooting at 1 uh, 20th uh, of a second shutter speed. Um, and this is the kind of image that I got. Now, like I said, because I know I'm shooting a night scene, I don't care what happens in those shadows there, because I know that at the end of the day, once I do my color grading, all of the stuff is going to be dark. Um, and that's something that you got to keep in mind. So again, this is the lag profile, very flat looking. Once I apply the LUT to convert it to proper video, you see it darkens all of those shadowy areas. And the same thing you can see reflecting here in the in the waveform. So because we already darkened the shadows, that means that any noise that was visible there in the log profile version of this shot, uh, which it is visible there because again it's a very flat looking image. Once I apply the LUT and darken those shadows, it's not as visible. So here's my second tip that I would give you guys. If you want to uh, minimize the noise in your shots, and especially when you're shooting at night. Always keep in mind that at the end of the day, in color grading, you want to actually darken your shots a little bit. doesn't mean you want to darken everything in your shot, just definitely the shadows. Because if you remember the fact that the, it's the shadows that always hold all that noise, then when you darken them, you're just going to make them less visible to the eye. If you make them less visible, means there's going to be less noise in your shot. Now here's one thing that I've heard many people talk about, which is uh, this whole technique of trying to expose to the right. And here's why I'll tell you why it's BS and why you don't want to always follow that. It's because if, you, if I was shooting this shot here at night 
and I was trying to expose to the right, meaning I was trying to uh, kind of get it brighter than I would want it in the final image. On this scene, there simply wasn't enough light. If I did that already, then I mean, so probably I would have to, the only way I would ha I could do that is by increasing the ISO. If I increase the ISO, I would again, just introduce more noise. And if you really increase the ISO and go really high, like you can do with some cameras uh, these days, then you're just gonna introduce more noise, but it's gonna be so much noise, it's gonna be even visible in the highlights. So then in that case, to get rid of that noise means you just gotta darken the whole image. So then what's the point of basically exposing to the right? As you can see in this in, in this shot, I didn't bother exposing to the right. I just exposed it properly, you could say, but keeping in mind that I knew b big parts of that image are gonna be very dark because just the shadows I'm gonna darken. So that's where I would give you the third tip is pay attention to your composition and definitely to your basically lighting contrast because you can have a low light key. Like in this case, my wife is mainly in the shadow, but part of her face and part of her shoulder here is lit by basically a, a light that was there uh, from a storefront. And so because of that, even though the front of her face is in the shadow, the shot still looks nice. Now here's another shot that I got with my wife where I used the exact same camera settings. So I did not change the uh, f-stop, which is f2.8 or 1 20th of a second uh, shutter speed um, because I was shooting at uh, 60 frames per second. And also my ISO is uh, 3200, just like in the previous shot that I showed you. Now here, because I was not paying attention to the, the lighting and especially the lighting composition, you'll notice that her face is now, uh, basically most of it is in the kind of darker shadowy areas where it's just being lit by the ambient light. And basically that light that's coming off the storefront is only there on that little edge of their face. So what happens to the shot when I start, you know, applying the, the LUT to kind of convert this from this V-Log flat looking image to proper kind of video uh, looking f uh, shot? Well, this is what happens. So it's definitely, uh, you know, there's more contrast. And uh, because of that, you're going to see a little bit more of that noise. And why? Because, well, the shot is mainly just dark shadows and darks. Now, here's what happens if I wanted to make her face more visible. Uh, basically, then I would have to go to my overall kind of basic color correction here and increase the uh, exposure. If I start increasing the exposure, you'll start noticing right away it's just a big no-no because then the noise is really visible, uh, especially once I zoom in. If I look at this shot here, the previous shot, as you can see half of my wife's face is in the shadow, but because the other half actually has some light in there, it's uh, it's just the shot looks a lot more interesting. And it's the same kind of lighting scenario, all that stuff, it just I kind of shot it from a different angle. Uh, here's another shot where you, you can see that, that same point being illustrated. So here's my wife and she's basically being, you know, standing against this building that's actually, you know, you could say has some light on there from this kind of fluorescent tubes. And so because of that, all we're getting is a sense of that there's somebody standing here, but you can't really see their face. Now here's what happens when I just simply move the camera a bit more to the right and I tell my wife uh, to kind of, you know, rotate her face a little bit more into the light that's coming in off of that building. There's part of her face here that's, even though it's kind of, you know, lit with low light, there's some information there. What that means now is that I can now bring up just that part that is basically has some light in there and it, because of that it doesn't have as much noise. What I definitely don't want to do is bring up the exposure on the shadowy parts of the image because again, that's where the noise is. So here, in this case, I'm just going to go to my basic color correction. I'll grab the highlights here and just bring up the highlights a little bit. In this case, I might even bring down the saturation because as I do that, the, the saturation gets uh, really strong. Uh, now, again, here's how the shot looks. It's definitely a low light sh shot. It has a lot of darks in it. It's very dramatic, very low key lighting but you can still see what's actually happening in the shot. And that's what I mean by using the, the kind of light contrast, because here in this case, uh, even though most of her face here is still in the shadow, it's okay, I'm leaving it in the shadow. I'm not trying to brighten up her whole face. Uh, I'm keeping that in the shadows and the dark. And actually in, a, in this case, I could even make the shot look even cleaner by taking the, the black areas, for example, of the shot and just dragging them down, meaning I'm ma making the black parts of the shot even darker. So if you look at this now, it's it looks even cleaner. But you're still getting a sense here of basically what's in the shot because I'm using that background here that again is a little bit brightly lit. So that background there is helping us outline my wife's hair, 
here that's this part of the image has you know there's some light there in the window and it's also lighting her left side of the face a little bit so because of that it's a shot that you can still use and even though it's definitely dark now if you wanted to let's say and you really cared about showing this part of the face well then you should have your actor uh basically or your subject rotate fully to where the light is uh you basically cannot shoot a low light scene with no light <laughs> you you need to have some light you can have a lot of the shot in your in uh, with no light and no complete shadows like you see up here but you need some light to create some contrast because if you don't and then afterwards you think you can just fix it then what you're gonna do in fact is just ruin your shot like for example like i said by just pulling up the exposure you see now it looks horrible or even if i didn't do that if i for example just say oh i want to brighten up the shadows a little bit well, if I brighten up the shadows, the same thing. Look at all this noise now being introduced. And so does that mean that you always have to have your subject's face, uh, at least part of the face, in some light? Uh, like, what if you wanted to get this really low-key kind of a shot where it's pretty much, you you know, like I said, the, the, your, the light is very minimal on your subject, but you still want it to be clear so you can see who, who's there, uh, but you also don't want to basically just increase the exposure of that shot like I did in this first example here. Uh, where it just kind of brightens the whole face. So can you do that? Well, well, yes, you can. And here's actually another shot that I got with my wife where it's the same location, the same camera settings. Uh, I just had her look away from the light. So she's kind of looking out into the street. And you'll notice pretty much basically all of her face is being lit by this ambient light, which is pretty much zero. You can see something there, but it's very faint. So this is how the shot looks when it's just standard uh, V-like profile. Once I applied the LUT to kind of convert it to proper color space, you'll notice the whole shot gets drastically darker because, the, like I said, the LUT will just... In, in, increase the contrast in the shot so uh, now her face is even darker but you'll notice that even though she's in a very dark I mean like I said lighting you still get a sense and you see basically that it's a, it's a woman's face because you see the features because you see the outline of, of that person and that's because I was very careful on how I framed the shot so in this case I knew she was going to be darkly lit but I still wanted the audience to be able to make out here that it's you know, a nose you know, seeing the lips uh, seeing somebody's face. So I basically placed my wife's face by adjusting my camera angle against these bright kind of lights that were there on the street. And that sort of helps with the composition of the shot because like I said, you can see the, the outlines uh, of the face better. Now I could still fix the shot up a little bit more. Uh, let's say, you know, there's, because majority of the shot is in complete darkness. So you're going to see noise there. Uh, so I can kind of fix that by actually taking the darks and kind of making them even darker. So I'm adding even more contrast. And in this case, because now the difference between the dark and the bright is going to be even more, you'll notice that her face actually, actually is going to be even more visible. Uh, I could also take the highlights and just brighten up the highlights. So just bring them up a little bit more. And again, that's going to make the shot a little bit better, a little bit more visible. Now, one thing I definitely don't want to do, and again, I want you guys to keep that in mind, is you do not want to take an image that's underexposed or part of an image that's underexposed and brighten that up. If anything, you want to darken that more. Because, like I said, you got to remember that the noise always remains in the darker portions of your shot. So, in this case, if I take the shadows and I brighten them, because, let's say, I want to see, you know, uh, my wife's face more, well, notice how much more noise I'm introducing. And if I just take the whole image and I brighten it up, well, then you might as well just say goodbye, because it's, uh, it's definitely a garbage-looking shot. Uh, so, once again, here's a recap of how you get clean-looking images without any noise. Uh, always first figure out what it is that you're trying to get, what kind of a look you're trying to get. If you're going for, uh, say, high key kind of lighting, uh, we want the shot to be very bright, well, you should already be shooting with that look in mind. You definitely don't want to be shooting uh, darker than that. If anything, you want to overexpose a little bit. If you're shooting, for example, going for low key lighting, then in that case, don't expose to the right, like, like some people would say. Uh, just expose it properly, knowing that you're still going to darken it a little bit, but you're just going to darken the, the, the shadowy parts of your image. Because again, the noise always stays in the shadowy parts of, of your shots, not in the, in the brighter spots. And now another big tip I'll tell you is, uh, just because you're shooting a low-key lighting scene or at night, doesn't mean that you can't use lights. You always have to use lights. And even in these shots, uh, you know, we're shooting and we're using available lights that were there on the street, 
but we're actually using the lighting to our advantage. So whether we're uh, having half of the face being exposed or we're using the lights to create an outline on our subject. So all those things like the composition and where you place your subject against the light and things like that, they all matter. So you want to use the light and because if you're not going to expose your shot properly and you're just going to get a completely underexposed shot, well, keep in mind that in post, you d you want to be darking that even further. That means that your shot is just going to look like garbage. Whereas if you get a nice low-key lighting shot like this one, but you still have some contrast there between the brighter and the darker parts of the image, uh, then you can still do a lot in with this image in post because you actually have some bright, clean parts of your image. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to be very safe either with the color grade. So like with this shot, for example, uh, this was again shot on the Panasonic GH5 and V-like profile. So here I'm just going to go and apply some of my other LUTs that I have. And these LUTs are actually uh, kind of, I, I customize them to work with various different cameras. And I actually have uh, here a set that are specifically made for V-like. So this, these will work with Panasonic GH4 or GH5 type cameras. So in this case, let's say uh, I wanted to go for, for that kind of, uh, let's say, road to perdition kind of look. I can apply that and you can see it already, that LUT automatically converts the, the shot from this you know, lag profile and it adds some kind of color grading to this. And because I applied it to my creative uh, tab here, I can still kind of decrease the intensity if I don't like, let's say it introduces too much contrast. So here I'm going to show you guys this is how it looks before. This is how it looks after I apply the LUT. You can see what happens to the, the histogram there, uh, especially if I put it at 100%. Well, I can put it, let's say, at 70 something percent here, kind of decrease the intensity of the LUT. I can also here go, go in my basic color correction and I can still make the shot brighter, but by just brightening the brighter parts of the image. So in this case, I'll just take the highlights and just bring those up. And you can see the shot now looks nice and bright, but again, you're not noticing any noise and that's because there is no noise in the highlights uh, of the shot. It's only there in the shadows. Uh, so you can definitely create a nice kind of effect. Uh, and here, let's just kind of try out some of these other LUTs that I have. I'll try, let's say, Sicario. You can see just creating a different kind of look. Uh, let's see the girl with the dragon tattoo. Again, different look. Or, for example, Transformers. And another one here, let's maybe just try uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. You can see this is the kind of look that we're getting. Um, so you can definitely get nice shots in low light or, you know, that are very clean, no noise. If you just remember those, uh, those tips that I mentioned. So anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did remember to, uh, hit that like button, hit it as hard as you can. Uh, and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, and while you're at it, why don't you just go and visit my website, tomatosfilms.com. Uh, where you can find a whole bunch of other tutorials like these ones uh, that, I'm, that I've already put out there and that I'll still be putting on in the future. Uh, so anyways, thank you guys and I'll see you next time when the next video comes out.